everybody, this is Mr. Winkle, and today we're talking about making crystals. And I just wanted to show you what we need to do that. Um, the first thing we're going to need is some stuff called borax. Um, and this you might be able to find in the grocery store. It's sometimes called washing soda. Um, I've got two different boxes here. Um, I couldn't find it at my local grocery store, so I had to get it at the hardware store. Um, so this is, this is what we're going to use to make the crystals out of. Um, we need some sort of a, a container, um, preferably glass because we're going to be pouring hot liquid in it. Um, so if you use something that's plastic, it could melt. Um, also, probably don't want to use like a drinking glass because um, it, the heat could, could break it. So if you've got a, a, a jar or something, that would work really great. Um, what's even better is if it's got straight sides on it um, because sometimes if the top is skinnier uh, when you grow the crystal it's too big and it can't come out so if you can find a jar that's got straight sides on it like the kind of like a peanut butter jar that's made out of glass that would be great um, you're gonna need to heat this and so you can heat it in the microwave so you can use a microwave safe um, like measuring cup or you can do it on the stovetop, so you need some sort of a, a saucepan. I'm going to do mine on the stovetop just because it's a little bit easier to see. Um, we're going to need a pencil. Um, and then either a, a piece of wire or a string, a short piece of string, because that's what our, our crystal is going to be suspended by. And then we need something that our crystal is going to grow on. We call that an armature. Um, and so what you can use, um, if you've got a pipe cleaner, those work really well. Um, I'm going to make something out of a paper towel here. I just took a paper towel and just kind of fringe cut it on the edges. Um, I'm actually going to try to use part of a, an egg carton. So this is a little cardboard uh, chunk of an egg carton. Um, so that's what we're going to need. And obviously we're going to need some water. Um, and uh, we'll show you how to grow crystals. So if you do your, um, your crystals on the stovetop and you use a saucepan like this, um, there's one thing we need to know about um, pouring from a saucepan. Um, because I found that a lot of families don't have funnels. Um, if you've got a funnel, that would probably work great. Um, but if you might want to just pour it right out of the pan into your jar. Um, if you try to pour it really, really slowly, Notice what's happening here. It's kind of running down this, the, the bottom of the pan and it's kind of making a huge mess here. So if you try to pour it really, really slowly out of a pan, it's not going to work very well. Um, what you want to do is you want to just kind of commit to it. So get your, get your jar. I would take your, when you're filling your jar, I would put it in the sink because you're not going to want to have hot water spilling all over you. And then you're going to want to just pour it pretty quickly like this. Um, because if you try to pour it slowly, like I showed you before, it's just going to sort of dribble down the bottom. So um, do this over a sink. Do not hold on to it because the water is going to be really hot. Um, but that's just a little technique that we need to know about. So before we start um, getting our crystal solution ready, we need to make something that's called an armature, which is going to be the thing that the crystals are going to grow on. Um, and so you can use a pipe cleaner. Um, you can make it any shape you want to. Um, and then the crystals will grow on that. So I just made kind of just a little zigzaggy thing. Um, like I said, I'm going to try to grow my crystals on part of a cardboard egg carton. I don't know that styrofoam would work because it's too smooth, but uh, cardboard should work. Um, and another easy thing you can do is just take a little piece of paper towel and you can see how I sort of just fringe, fringe the edges of it. Um, then if you roll this up into kind of like a tube, and I'm just going to take a piece of wire, or you can use string, whatever you've got. Um, and just wrap it around the middle of my, my tube there. Um, and then just take the, the edges and kind of pull it apart. So you're kind of making like a pom-pom almost. Um, 
And this works really, really well for crystals. You get really big crystals if you do this. Um, so this is another thing you can use as, a, as an armature or a crystal starter um, is something like, like this. So before we start cooking everything, we want to make sure that everything is ready ahead of time. And so for my crystals, I'm going to use this um, piece of a cardboard egg carton. And what I want to do is I want to figure out um, where this should sit. So you can see that this is kind of, it's a, pretty close to the sides here. So I'm just going to tear off a little bit of this because I don't really want it touching any of the sides. So I'm just going to kind of just tear it off there like that. And we want this to kind of hang right in the middle. We don't want it touching the bottom. We don't want it touching the sides. We want it just kind of suspended right in the middle. Um, so if we figure that out, where that should be, I'm just going to take my pencil and I'm just going to wrap my wire around that. And so now if I just put my pencil in the top like that, um, you can see that it's not touching the sides, it's not touching the bottom, it's just kind of suspended right in the middle, which is where we want it. Because sometimes the crystals will start to grow on the bottom, and your, your armature will get stuck to the bottom, and then you can't get it out. So we want it kind of up off the bottom. So if we get this all measured out ahead of time and figured out exactly um, how it's going to hang in our jar, um, we'll be all set when we actually put it together. All right, so I like to do this on top of the stove because I can see what's going on a little bit better. Um, if you're not familiar with using your stove, um, please have an adult type person help you out with that. Um, so I just have a saucepan that's got some water in it and I just have the same amount of water as will fit in my jar. I don't need any extra water. Um, and I'm heating it up. Um, I'm not boiling it, but I'm just a little bit below a boil. Um, pro tip, um, rather than having your big box of borax and dumping that in here, I would just pour some borax in another container um, and then maybe get like a measuring cup to scoop it in. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start adding um, some borax to my hot water here. Um, and it's going to be really important that once you add it, that you stir it. Um, because we want it to get completely dissolved. What we're doing is we're making something called a super saturated solution, which means that um, is this, the powder that we're putting in, the borax powder we're putting in, um, if it's hot, we can actually get more of it to dissolve than if it was at room temperature. So I'm just adding a little bit of borax at a time here and stirring and paying attention to make sure that it all dissolves. So we always got to keep on stirring it. We don't want it to, because this will actually burn on the bottom of the pan and then your parents will not be happy with you if that happens. Or your wife. So I'm just going to keep on adding here. And if you notice that there's starting to be some borax at the bottom that's not dissolving, um, that means you're pretty much got as much borax in as you can. There's not really a good recipe for this, like take a certain amount of water and add a certain amount of borax. Um, it kind of depends on what kind of borax you get and what kind of water you have. Um, so I can't really give you an exact recipe. But um, I'm just going to add just a little bit more here. You can see that this is still, still dissolving. Because we want to try to get as much borax to dissolve in the water as we can. We don't want any sitting on the bottom. We just want it to um, get totally, totally dissolved here. I'm just going to put the rest of this in here. Yeah, you can see that this is getting pretty cloudy, pretty white, which means that it's holding, the water is holding about as much borax as it can. Um, so I'm just going to make sure that it's all totally mixed up here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off the heat and I'm going to let it cool just a little bit because um, if I pour hot water into a glass jar, it could crack. 
Um, so if I'm going to let it cool down a little bit to prevent that from happening. So um, why don't you let it cool down until you can stick your finger in it comfortably um, before you pour it. So now I've let my solution cool. I can stick my finger in it. It's still pretty warm, but I can keep my finger in it. Um, remember, we don't want you to hold the jar because you're going to spill and burn yourself. So put it in the sink. And remember, when we pour, we're going to commit. So we're not going to pour it slowly. We're just going to pour it in like this. All right, I'm going to just move over here to the stovetop again. So remember, I've already measured this so it fits in the, the jar perfectly so it's not touching the sides or the bottom. I'm just going to dunk that in there, make sure that there's no bubbles in it at all so it doesn't float. Um, and then I want to put this someplace where it's going to cool very slowly. Um, because the slower it cools, the bigger your crystals will be. So don't, don't put it outside, don't put it in the refrigerator. Um, put it someplace um, where it's going to cool very slowly and it's not going to get bumped or jostled at all. It needs to sit very, very still. Um, your crystal should start forming in a few hours. Um, we'll check on it in a couple hours and see what it looks like. All right, it's been an hour. And I was just going to pull out our, our uh, armature here from our jar, and you can see, let's maybe get a close-up here of this. Um, we've got some really nice crystals. This is just after one hour on, on my little cardboard milk carton. Um, so if I leave that in longer, um, it's probably going to get much, much bigger. You can also see that my jar also has lots of um, crystals in it. Um, we have to be careful because sometimes your armature will stick to the jar um, and you'll kind of break your crystals when you're pulling them out. Um, I did make a few others um, a while ago. Um, this I just made out of pipe cleaners. I made kind of just a little cup shape out of pipe cleaners. Um, and it, that turned out really nicely. Um, here's another one that I made out of pipe cleaners. I just made kind of a little pom-pom kind of a thing out of pipe cleaners and got some really nice crystals there. And um, this last one was a chunk of paper towel that I used. Um, and I also got some really nice crystals there. So it really doesn't matter too much what you use. Um, you'll, you should get some nice crystals um, either way. A um, couple of final thoughts. Um, one thing you can do is you can add food coloring so you can have colored crystals. These are just plain um, the way they, the borax looks by itself. So you can add food coloring. Um, what might be cool is try some time lapse on your phone to see if you can actually see the crystals growing. Um, and then maybe to do some, some close-up photography on your crystals to get some really cool pictures. Um, because we want to look at things like symmetry and, and the shape of the crystals. Um, so good luck with that. If you have any questions, uh, let me know and I'll help you out. This is Mr. Winkles signing off.